Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to change things up a bit uh, today because we're all tight on time, a lot of things going on. So uh, before we actually do my briefing, uh, we have as our guest, Espen Bart Aide, the Secretary General Special Envoy on Cyprus. And as you know, we had uh, dinner uh, with the parties uh, last night. So Espen, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And I, um, we had, as, uh, as you just heard, we had a, a working dinner uh, last night. Uh, the Secretary General hosted the dinner for uh, Mr. Nikos Anastasiades, the Greek Cypriot leader, and Mr. Mustafa Kinshi, the Turkish Cypriot leader. And the topic of the dinner was uh, to ask them whether they felt that they w we are now ready to go for a final conference in the, uh, in the Conference on Cyprus in Geneva. And after a long and intense and open and honest discussion uh, uh, over four hours, uh, the outcome was that yes, the two leaders are committed to ask the Secretary General to reconvene the conference uh, on Cyprus uh, in Geneva. Uh, it will be reconvened in June, most likely in the latter half of June. Uh, the Secretary General and myself, we will now be reaching out to uh, Turkey, Greece, uh, the United Kingdom and the European uh, Union, who are the three first uh, guarantor powers and the European Union and observer to this conference. And it, this constitutes the, the membership of the conference. Um, and uh, we are happy with the fact uh, that we are now able to, uh, or that we, we, we have an agreement between the leaders, rather, that we are now able to reconvene the conference and see if, uh, if we are able to go the final mile and actually have a settlement in Cyprus. A lot of work still remains, and uh, I have been entrusted uh, by yesterday's meeting uh, with the task to now uh, reach out and uh, continue a dialogue with uh, all the participants of the uh, conference on the issue of creating a, a common document which will be the basis uh, for uh, the discussions in the conference on the chapter on security and guarantees. Because um, uh, the Cyprus uh, negotiations happen in a way on two levels. One level is all those issues that relate to the uh, Cypriots themselves. And that's what we call the bicommunal talks uh, between the Turkish Cypriot and the Greek Cypriot leader, which I facilitate. But then we have the international dimension because of the uh, continued existence of uh, international treaties that inscribes uh, Cyprus into a local security, regional security system. Uh, and uh, in order to further develop, change or abolish or invent something new, we need the, uh, the parties to those treaties involved. So those discussions have to happen uh, between not only the Cypriot sides, but also the guarantor powers. And because uh, United Cyprus will be an EU member, the European Commission also has to be involved in this, as they were in the initial conference. So, so we, the Secretary General uh, is, uh, is happy with the outcome and glad that we got to this point, but we also want to be very clear that a lot of work remains to be done and, and, and will be done in the, in, the, in the coming weeks before we're able to meet uh, in, in Geneva later this month. Great. Thank you very much. We'll uh, open up for questions. Matthew? Thanks a lot. And yeah, it was, you know, obviously you guys worked hard yesterday, but I wanted to ask, the issue of hydrocarbons, did this come up? I know it's been a matter of some controversy as Cyprus seeks to, to, to begin exploring. Was this discussed upstairs? And also, I've asked Stefan a couple of times, but I think you would know this. Just if you can give a ballpark figure. The, he said that you're when actually employed, or you're an envoy. So just if you can estimate it, in the last, in the last you know, year, 365 days, how many of those days have you been employed? Thanks. Uh, yeah, they're two quite different questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 hydrocarbons was not discussed uh, yesterday, uh, 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 apart from a brief mention, uh, but that's because I think all sides are fully aware of, uh, uh, of um, uh, the argument that with the settlement, uh, uh, hydrocarbons, as both leaders have said in many speeches and statements, hydrocarbons can be a, a, um, a conducive element in the case of a solution because the resources could be shared and it would be easier to develop a, a regional energy hub with the settlement. I don't want to make more statements about that. It was not the topic of yesterday's discussion. Uh, I, so I am, uh, when actually employed, uh, I, uh, I basically only do this. I have no other uh, employment now because uh, since these talks really took off uh, roughly a, a, a full year ago, I, this has been my main effort. So I basically work uh, most of the time on this, so something like 20 days uh, uh, a week, I guess, but uh, a month, sorry, a month. But I mean, I, I don't like have these exact or... numbers, but this, yeah. is, this is really what I'm doing, and I'm not doing I know, no other things. Yeah. Abdul Hamid, uh, Thank you, Abdul Hamid. I'm from the daily Al-Quds Al-Arabi. 
I would like to hear more about the atmosphere, about the details of the meeting, the, the, the uh, kind of topics discussed, how the atmosphere between the two presidents. Can you give us a little bit more detail about the meeting and the, and the, the working dinner? Thank you. It was, um, I would say the climate was what we call frank and honest, uh, meaning that uh, the two sides have a shared uh, vision of a united Cyprus. That's been clear to me for all the time I've been working with them. Uh, but they have uh, some um, disagreements about how that should come about and particularly how to order the different issues on the way there. And this is exactly why the Secretary General wanted to meet them, because a similar attempt led by myself uh, a few weeks ago to try to get them to common ground on how to reconvene uh, Geneva did not uh, lead to a success. And I, I conveyed this to the Secretary General, and his response was, let, let me see them and let's meet them together uh, uh, here. Um, the meeting was good. Uh, it, it was friendly, but, but I shall, will not hide the fact that there were different views and that uh, the Secretary General used his diplomatic skills to, to get to a common agreement. But at the end of the day, I think both sides are happy with the fact that we have, uh, uh, we have a perspective. The, I will underline the two main elements of that. Security of guarantee and guarantees is an essential element for both communities, because if you're not secure, why would you why would you vote yes to a settlement agreement? At the same time, it has to be understood as interdependent with other issues because security is not only a question of troops and foreign guarantees, it's also about how you organize the state and how your internal structures work. Uh, and I think that uh, the, the agreement that we came up with and the statement that reflects it uh, basically caters to what was most important for both sides in, 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 in a balanced and constructive way. Um, the, um, we wouldn't have been where we are because everyone who follows this, not only myself and my team, but the leaders themselves and any analyst working on Cyprus seem to agree that the leaders have come further than in any previous attempts. As you know, there's been many attempts, including the Anand plan, which failed uh, in the end. There have been many attempts and they've never been as close. And that is because of this personal trust and chemistry that was developed and which we saw particularly in the early days between the leaders. But then, Half a year ago, I, I detected something which I also said publicly, which is, which is that we are now in this final mile. And in the final mile, there's a particular form of nervousness uh, because as a leader, uh, you are beginning to see that the solution is possible, but only if you, you yourself are giving those final accommodations and concessions that hasn't been given before. And seen from the outside, from the rest of us, creating a peace deal is obviously the heroic thing to do. But from them, they, they don't disagree with that, but they also have to remind, remind themselves and remember where is the boundaries of my own community's willingness to come along with that. So that nervousness, of course, creates certain tensions. But I also know from working intensely with them over all these days, as we talked about earlier, is that at the end of the day, they, they tend to end up agreeing on, on something. And when they do, they're happy. Sarah, then Evelyn. Sir. Sorry, Sarah Britton, New Somerset for the Metro. Thank you for this briefing and for the progress that you've made so far. I wanted to ask you, how has Turkey's rise in authoritarianism following the consolidation of power and the referendum affected the negotiations? Well, I will say that developments in, in relevant neighboring states, including Turkey, is of course high on my agenda, and I spend much time there, and I engage closely with them, and it's a question um, uh, the question of, of domestic development in Turkey is relevant for my work. But I have to say that so far, I feel that Turkey, as Greece, are, they are both committed to finding a settlement. They are not yet on the same page on what that settlement is. But they both see that it's in, they tell me that it's in their strategic interest in the regional and global developments if, if Cyprus, the Cyprus problem could be solved and we could lay it behind us. And I take some hope oh, from the fact that this is something they continue to tell me. They're easily accessible. I speak with the, with the foreign minister and the foreign ministry. I speak with the president's office. I speak with the prime minister and the prime minister's office. And, uh, and, and I have a good and, and, and uh, a deep dialogue with uh, the levers of power in Turkey on this issue, as I do also with, with Greece. So I haven't seen a change in their position on the Cyprus problem. 
uh, and if I've seen some, I've always seen them become more eager to, to try to be constructive now to find, find a settlement because I think it fits well into bigger issues of relationship to Europe, uh, energy developments, and so on. Evelyn Danidi. From the um, UN Correspondents Association. Um, the Turkish troops, how big of a stumbling point is that? The president of Turkey, I doubt, ever wants to withdraw troops anywhere. And secondly, um, how there seems to be, since the last negotiations that, that ended up fruitless, um, there seems to be a lot more crossing green lines and association between the two communities. Is this helping the talks, or how much further do they have to go? There, there is a significant um, civil society efforts and a number of groups of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots who come together and over the last weeks when these talks have been in this very critical stage, we've seen a lot of expressions of that and I, I think that uh, both the leaders and, and I myself, we welcome that because it's an expression that a lot of Cypriots normal you know, Cypriots uh, from all walks of life would like to see uh, an end to this many, many years of division. Um, on the issue of Turkish troops, th there's actually there are two key issues in the, in the security, of, uh, uh, on sec uh, security and guarantees chapter. Uh, it's the issue of the Treaty of Guarantees, uh, and, it's the, uh, and then it's the Treaty of Alliance. The Treaty of Alliance from 1960, it was uh, what authorized the presence of foreign troops in the first place. And the Treaty of Guarantees is what, according to Turkey, authorized what happened in 1974, which is contested by the other sides. So what we're looking into is if there is a way to uh, create a common security vision for Cyprus, for the 21st century, not so much building on 1960 realities, but more building on 2017 realities, which provides um, change for those who need change, but also continuity for those who need some kind of continuity, because the Turkish Cypriot community tells us that they need to be assured in some form uh, about the fact that they, being the numerically smaller communities, that they still are, will be safe and sound, not only for secure for life and property, but also the security of community, identity, you know, togetherness as, as Turkish Cypriots, while at the same time this being achieved in such a way that it does not create the source of insecurity on the Greek Cypriots. So, so what we, will, we are doing and what we will be doing in the coming weeks is to continue to elaborate on some ideas we have which we've already informally shared with all the participants about a new model that will be different, but we still provide uh, some mutual assurances and some, some kind of international oversight of, uh, uh, of the implementation of the treaty. Uh, because in, any, in, in, in many peace agreements, and I've been involved in many of those, some successful and some not so successful, but what I do know is that um, you, may have, you may come to a point where the two sides actually like what's on the paper but they will question, will the other side actually implement what's on this paper? How do I know that this will be uh, in 10 years like we describe it? And maybe then there's a role for the UN, the UN or for other international bodies to take a role in overseeing that implementation until things have moved on in such a way that this has become normal and people don't need it any longer. So when I said in the beginning there's a long way to go, it's particularly on those issues. How do you elaborate a security system that creates a sense of security in both communities and for all separates, but without the security of one being the source of insecurity of the other. Edie. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ayer. A couple of follow-ups to uh, last night's statement. Uh, first, the Secretary General said, of course, that the talks are going to take place this month, and when he was asked as he was leaving, he said soon. Um, I understand that drilling is supposed to start off Cyprus by mid-July. Um, is this a target for finishing these talks and hopefully an agreement? And secondly, uh, you had said in late May that both sides are closer to an agreement than many people expected. Um, 
does this agreement last night move the ball closer to that? And if so, how much and how far mm -hmm. is there to go? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I, 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 I don't, first, I'm not going to say more about the hydrocarbons issue. It was not discussed yesterday. It's not the focus of my work. Uh, my, the focus of my work is now to get... Uh, uh, I, excuse me, I wasn't asking about the hydrocarbon no. issue. I was only asking about the timing. Yeah. But, so, so, but, but that's what I'm answering. I'm not, I'm not making a connection between this, but there is a sentiment uh, among both sides, and they have expressed it to me earlier, already on the 17th of May, when we actually tried. So on the 17th of May, in the meeting I chaired in Cyprus, we were trying to come to an agreement not very different from what happened yesterday, and they both said, the leaders themselves, Anastasiades and Akinci, said that they would ideally see this conference taking place in June. So that June already developed then, and the, the, their reasoning for June was that basically we have done what we can do. We have achieved what can be achieved in the current format of one chapter after another, one item after another. It's time to see how these things are interrelated. We have to bring in the security and guarantees dimension. That issue can only be adequately addressed with the presence of the guarantor, and that means Geneva. So they agreed to that. And the, the problem we had until last night was the sequencing and ordering of that, not, not the aim of a, a June conference in Geneva. So, and when, when we did not have a date, that's, simple, that's for a very simple reason. Uh, only two of the participants were present in the room. We need to uh, agree with Greece, Turkey, and the UK as well, and also to inform the EU who's an observer, and only then we can settle a date. But I'm saying it's June, and we're, thinking about, we're talking about the second half of June. And um, in, in, terms, in terms of um, how long this conference would go, um, do you see it as open-ended? Is it because I noticed that the last one went for I think three days and then followed by the guarantors? Yeah, good question. The conference is actually on; it's just not in session. <laughs> the conference started in the morning of 12th of January and it hasn't closed. So what we're talking about is to reconvene as having a, the third session. We had the first session, which was just one day. The next week we had a, a couple of days uh, at the deputies level. And uh, then we, we were planning to come back quickly to Geneva. We had some other events uh, which led to a, a stall in the talks for unrelated issues. And when the talk started, we now decided to come back. So. It is in principle open-ended. Uh, it means that we, we will eventually have a start date. We will not have an end date because the end date is when we've solved the problem or, or of course, concluded that it's unsolvable, hopefully not. Uh, but so we, we're, not, we're not declaring an, a number of days. Uh, we're hope, we, we believe it will take some time. Maybe, maybe we, we're talking about up to two weeks. And, and you didn't answer Sorry. my second question Sorry. about, which was about your comment about being closer than thought yeah. and this moving the No, exactly. Forward. Well, what I meant by that is that first we have a lot of actual agreements, which uh, which covers um, most of the, the most of the issues in the four chapters that have been most most intensively discussed: its governance and power sharing, its property, uh, its economy, and EU matters. And if you add to that the understanding, the shared understanding of where we will end up in other issues, uh, I would say that on five chapters, the leaders, while we don't have all the agreements on paper, uh, they have a, a reasonably good outline in their head about what, where this will end up. So the chapter that has been least developed is the chapter of security and guarantees. And the idea now is that we need, we need to give a certain emphasis on this chapter because um, it is very important for both communities. It's an area where they have opposing starting positions. And in order to be able to see across all chapters in the final, final phase, we need to put some more, let's say, more meat on the bone of, of that chapter as well. So in that sense, the answer is yes, we got a little closer because we have a modality by which we can do that which we didn't have before last night. So, so I would say that that became just a little bit more true. But, but I want to say that always with reference to my point about the last mile, you may, have, you may be 80, 90 percent done, but that doesn't mean that the remaining percent are the easy ones. They are, by definition, the difficult ones. And that's why they have been outstanding until now, because if they were easy, they would have been solved. So, so the, 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 uh, the end game of such processes are always some more intense than, let's say, the early days. We know that. 
Sylviane? Okay, great. Thank, thank you very All much. Right. Uh, we have one, one last one. You, go ahead. Okay. No. Are you taking questions on the GCC crisis? Uh, no, I'm sure to do my briefing now. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.